Hi. Hi. And welcome to Lamathan 2024. Um, we're from Inchuk Farms, um, which is on the Perthshire Angus border. My name's Debbie McGowan. And I'm Tally McGowan. And we look forward to showing you around our sheep today. Um, I hope you can see us. Yeah. Um, if you've got any questions, please um, just stick, just them, in stick the them in the comments mm -hmm. box. And uh, we'll look forward to um, answering them. So, um, our farm is 477 hectares, um, which is about a thousand acres. And we're predominantly beef and sheep farmers. We're lambing about 80 texels at the minute, and we'll be about a week ago. Yeah, we're about a, a week, week into texel yeah. lambing. And then later on at the end of April, we start lambing the clins, and they will lamb outside, and there's about 880 of them. Oh, yeah. hi, hi, um, into the park. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay. We're just um, practicing my phone seems to be playing up and saying please rotate your device, but we're trying to ignore that um, and uh, carry on in um, landscape. So the weather's been pretty pants at the moment, and um, we've got really no groundwork done outside. Mm. Um, and lambing, we've been lucky enough that we've got. Um, Plenty of space in sheds, haven't we? So yeah. that we've been keeping everybody in. So we're about full to the gunnels of um, ewes and lambs. Um, and I think we've got about 60 sheep left to lamb in the shed here. Um, we'll see if we can turn you around. What happens if we double tap? Who? Um, so this is this is the girls. So we kind of tag our texels um, when they're born, so we know what um, year they are. Um, so that's a green tagged you. So she'll be about six. And she's got a single lamb. So it's got a little dot on its bottom. And these guys here are all tagged. We tag them when they're born. Well, look. Um, so he's got his little EID tag in there. Um, and we record him with his um, mother and his father. And what birth weight he was when he was born. Um, and then any time he comes into a reader on the farm, um, we can see who he is and what he's done. Um, hello, if, if you want to put in the chat box who you are, we'll welcome you here. Hi, Graham. How are you? Oh, Katie, hello. Yeah. We're missing you. Can we up here, Lammy? No, oh, hi, Lorna. I think you've got a dry day down with you. It was pretty wet in here this morning, but it seems to have um, dried up a little bit, and these girls might get out um, later on. Uh, so, mm. so, the different colours of the numbers painted on the lambs, you might have noticed they have different colours. So the different colours of the numbers like, correspond to the dad. Um, which means that just when you're kind of going about and seeing all the lambs, you might notice that um, like all the green ones maybe are really strong, good lambs. And then um, it means that you just know that about the chuck, which is, which is a good thing to know. So those green lambs, their dad's actually um, from Fern Farms up in Tain. And we bought him last year at their online sale. And he seems to be proven to be very easy lambs, which is great, which we like. Um, and red lambs, you see a little red lamb there. Um, he came there, that came from Dunsire. And um, there's some pretty good lambs too. Oh, we're getting a bit of a very close selfie from a you here. 
Um, ah, so this ewe, that's actually just coming to range, um, she's a, a clin, so um, the clins come from the Finn Peninsula in North Wales, um, and they're renowned for their um, being good maternal traits. And you can see she's got a much finer face and finer legs. Um, so they're the maternal ones. And then we've got the texels, which is uh, what we're mainly lambing now. And they were originated from the island of Texel, just off Holland. And they are um, predominantly for their muscling abilities and um, terminal science. So we have an online ram say it and on farm beginning of um 10th of september and we'll sell um about 50 texture rams and 50 clin rams so hello jenny Godbraith. hi jenny Godbraith. how are you today not seen you for a while Graham Buckland, he's got his shed busy today. Oh, Graham's shed busy too. I don't know what he's doing on Facebook. What, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're wondering why you're on Facebook if you've been busy in the shed. Thank you. Hi from South US. That's a long way away. Hope you've got some sunshine over there. Oh, number eight coming in. It's like he's a little boy. There we go. One o'clock, is that right? So, well, welcome to Inshuk. We've got Neil here. Hi. <laughs> so, and then... And there's Tally and I at this side. Ah, there we go. There go. <laughs> um, yeah. So again, hi, welcome to Inchip, and we will give you a little tour around our sheds. So these girls have all been scanned. And that's who we've got left, Lamb. So we've got the red dots, a triplet, and we've got some little blue dots on hips, which are singles. So they, at the moment, should be out through the day and in the shed at night, but it's been that terrible weather that we've actually just got them in today. Um, but hopefully they'll get out a bit later if it clears up. So. You can see we've still got lots of puddles outside. Pretty grim. Mm -hmm. We've got a lambing camera in the shed. So we can look at them from an app in our phone to check if there's anything lambing in the sheep shed. Um, and we've got the same in the three um, calving sheds too. So it's for calving ling cattle and cimental cattle at the same time as we lamb um, but uh, as we said earlier our main lambing isn't until the 25th of April when we've got um, 880 clins to lamb outside so we're praying for a bit of sunshine then so. Hello Daniel Hi Daniel How are you? Are you lambing yet? Oh and Elsie from Australia, that's a long way away. Night time with you. So, cool. are we going to have a little look at a sheep in a pen? Mm -hmm. So, um, the sheep in this big pen on the other side that Mum was showing me before, they will, they will lamb in there, and then, so you, we we scan them earlier in the year, and the ones that have got a blue dot on the bum, like that one, over there, um, we'll have a 
single, and there's some there with a red dot on the bum, which means they're having three, and everyone else will have twins. So we know when they're finished lambing. Um, and then once they've got them licked and they're all kind of standing up, we'll move them into a smaller pen, which Mum's just going to show you. And when we do that, we'll give the navel a squish of iodine, um, just to prevent any infection getting in there. So about um, four weeks before we start lambing, uh, we give them a vaccination, uh, which is sort of an eight in one, so that they have some, uh, it's called Heptavac P, and it just um, goes into the colostrum for the lambs and gives them a bit of immunity to pneumonias and helps prevent illnesses. So we will follow Tally. That are lambing heads. So we've got numbers on the tops of the pens um, so that we can uh, record them when they come into the pen if there's any problems. And um, then we write them down typo. This lot, uh, the ones in the pen here, all just lamb yesterday. I think the um, we can colour code the, the U's as well. So this one here with the purple tag is a she's what we call a gimmer. So she's a first time lammer. Um, she lamb. Uh, she managed to lamb herself out in the field uh, when she was out briefly yesterday. And uh, uh, so she's um, uh, there's about five or six different colours that we use. So um, this girl here also is a purple tag, but she's. Uh, she's from the last time around. She's eight years old, so she's our uh, she's our oldest Texel ewe. Um, so eight's quite old for a for a sheep, probably. And she really quite clear last night. She had. Uh, I got up to check a sheep at uh, just after one, and then I got up at just after two to check a different sheep that was lambing, and in between times this one had. Started to lamb, finished lambing, and had her lambs up and suckled. So she's done a right good job again. So she's been a really good ewe. Um, she's done everything kind of correctly. So, um, and she's a, an upset twins again. And I think she's got a boy and a girl this time. So a girl to keep for the flock. So I think she's got a good nice bit of character in her head. She's a nice texel. Oh, I just want to look at the lamb. Points of the sheep. She's got a wide, big nostril and nose. Shows a bit of character. And she's a nice, uh, a nice uh, smooth, silky hair on her head. Um, which keeps her, uh, not only keeps them warm when they're little lambs like this, you see the lamb. She's got a nice full head of hair, um, which is good for keeping it warm, just as a as a baby lamb. But it also impacts the um, the flies through the summer. The sheep with the full head of hair um, don't seem to be affected by flies so much. Oh, there we are, two lambs. So she's a, a full coat of wool, um, and uh, but uh, our wool's uh, the, we're keeping the sheep really for for meat. The wool's not it uh, uh, doesn't really make economic sense anymore, unfortunately. Although it's a really good product, and uh, uh, we like to have a nice quality fleece. Uh, it really doesn't make a lot of sense to have it at the moment. Um, so our main aspects, the, the sort of shape of the sheep, so her, uh, her, her body structure, and she's got good straight straight legs and good square, and I, I like this view, she's really square in her legs, she's, um, but she's not too wide in front, and she's got a good width behind. She's just a nicely put together view, I think. 
the sheep only have teeth on the bottom jaw, no teeth on the top. On the CD's teeth? Mm. I'm not sure how many teeth this old lady will have left. An old dude? Might not be very pretty. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Do do. Do do. Mm. So, doesn't seem to have impacted her though. She seems pretty chunky. Mm. So that's um, a sheep's tools for her job. Really, is her teeth. So she's uh, she's lacking in her teeth department. But she's all right for an eight-year-old view. Um, so teeth and toes. So she's got to. <laughs> got to work, walk every day and get enough grass inside her to, 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 to fuel herself. To, she's got a huge amount of, um, she's got a huge amount of milk to produce at the moment uh, and, and over the next probably three months while she's rearing these lambs. Um, so we're looking forward to a lot of grass growing very soon and um, uh, that'll be hard. Got to be able to uh, walk all day and eat all day as much as she can. So that's our, our teeth and our toes. And then our udder is quite important too because uh, she's really got to, these lambs are completely reliant on her for uh, a good eight weeks and then uh, and, and then also for longer as they as they start eating grass after them. Okay. Cool. Any questions, please just pop them in the comments box and um, we'll answer them if we can. We'll try and find a good mouth. Mm. <laughs> well, we could see the one. In the camera. That's a good set of noshes. But she, uh, she was a gimmer last year. She's got a full mouth. Nice short teeth. Okay. <laughs> so size of use. These um, texels tend to be. Oh! We're going for another one. There we go. That's, this is a gimmer. So you see. Two big front teeth, but the rest are smaller. So you can age a sheep by looking at the teeth up into a point and they get all the teeth in. Um, okay. Yeah. We've got some cool sheep packs, Ty. <laughs> so the lambing shed seems to be quite quiet at the moment we don't actually have anybody lambing which is very sad probably means they're all going to lamb through the night again uh, last night we had four from midnight onwards um, but we all look pretty chilled and calm so we're part of the agritourism group um, which is throughout Scotland and we have a holiday house on the farm in Shook Granary and we also do our own um, beef and lamb oh this is our sheepdog come um, general purpose or oh, Sky, our Jack Russell anyway so we're um, running lambing tours um, as well we've got another tour coming at two we've had one this morning and we have some Scotch dumpy hens on the farm and we've just hatched some chicks. So um, the Scots dumpy is um, a rare breed. It's what Scotland has two native breeds of chicken and the Scots dumpy is one of those. And um, they're doing a lot of cheaping. Um, and they're renowned for their... Um, small legs they were called creepy chickens back in the day 
and they've been around since um, Pictish times and the Picts used to keep them to um, ward off the Romans. They reckoned if Roman came in the camp, the cockerel would make a sound like a, a roar, which they do. It's a very bizarre sound. Um, but yeah, we're trying to keep this heritage breed going. So we've got um, nine little chicks uh, that hatched in the incubator two days ago. So, and then we've got some pet lambs in the pen here. Um, I think we've got seven. There's one laid over here too. Um, and these were all triplets. We don't run a you with three lambs, we lift one. Um, so these guys are just chilling, waiting for um, a mummy to come along, hopefully. Although we're hoping that they don't get a mummy. Um, and, uh, They're very good for mm. yes. so, so that's the little dudes there. So, uh, hello, team. David Heath from. Hi, David. From Lancashire. Um, so these guys will, the next, they'll get out to grass hopefully next week when the weather gets a bit better. And um, and then the next thing that will happen to them is they'll get um, oh, there's a lamb. There we go. Oh, cutie. So again, that's a little triplet lamb that she's got there. So yeah, they'll get a vaccination. Oh, we're gonna shoot the... Yep. And then um, maybe a first worm drench if they need to. We'll do worm counts, so we'll... Um, pick up dung samples and, and see whether they actually need wormed or not. Um, because we're on minimum intervention if we can. So these guys when they're in the shed uh, just get they're getting silage and um, a little bit of hay. Uh, so they get tagged as well, um since we've got a little tag in. And that's got um, like an EID, like a little chip in it. And then um, we weigh them. We've got a state of the art lamb weigher here. Um, the weight gets put on the tag so you know how heavy he was when he was born. And then every time that he runs through the weight scanner after that, it'll tell you how much weight he's put on um, since you last weighed him. And that also helps us with the targeted um, like kind of parasite treatment. Because if you've got one that's not putting on a lot of weight, then you probably need to drench. Whereas your ones that are putting on weight are probably fine. Um, so you're not that sort of because you're targeting the treatment, you're not getting much resistance. Um, which is good. Um, we also record um, they get a number for how easy they were to land. So. A one is very good, she's lambed herself fine, and she's had three lovely girls, and that's their weight, and that's how you remember them, so she's going to be remembered as the one with the um, dopey one with the pink nose, um, <laughs> uh, which just means that when we scan her and put the tag in, then we know what weight she was. Um, and then that's the dad, and we can find out all about um, the parentage through this little sheep we got printed off. Um, and we would also, when we tag them, we put it all down in a notebook with the tag numbers too. And then we give the... Oh, do we get out of here? Oh. Pardon? I don't know that I started that way. Um, so that oh. Okay. Yay, my face yeah. happy now. Um, so I don't know if you can see the score. There's um, three numbers. That one's minus one zero zero. Um, so they get those three numbers. One is for 
the brownies, mm. and then the next one is for mothering. how hardy the mothering, yeah, and um, how good a mother they are. And the next one is lamb vigor. Lamb vigor. Lamb vigor. Yeah. So, so we've got that, yeah. and then we can use a little recording device, which is um, an APR 600, um, and we can just zap them. So it's quite simple. It just tells us who they are, and then I can download it onto my main computer, and we've got everybody happily recorded. Then. So, also on the farm, we've got uh, quite a little bit of um, environmental work. So, we've done bits of, a bit of woodland planted across there. Um, we've got some new hedges along on the, just the edge of the shed there. We've put in about three kilometres of hedges this um, last autumn, all for um, shelter and wildlife. Um, and we're in a wader scheme, so at the moment we've got um, lap wings and oyster catchers um, all nesting and we've recorded their nest nesting sites and we'll hopefully see them through to um, them having offspring and keeping them alive, which is uh, quite difficult on the old wader. They only have an 8% chance of um, hatching. Being your elder. Mm? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, owl box. Got a little owl box up here. Uh, the box at the top of the screen. Don't know whether I can zoom in. Um, so um, it's got a tawny owl in and has had for the last five years, will it be? Um, and they usually have a couple of chicks every year. So um, so that's quite good. And we've got a barn owl down at Inchuk, which is um, where the main sort of studding is. Um, and it's got a lot of long, young cattle running in the sheds down there. Um, so we've got the sheep at Sheil Walls and cattle at Inshuk and some cattle at um, New Craig too. Uh, I wonder whether we can take you out and show you one of the Scots dumpy cockles. We're going to see a cockle. No. Oh. Mm. This was one, this was this morning, this little pair, so they've all got like, the full tummies in there, having a snooze, so we iodine the navels twice, just to, uh, and we bed them up on, um, they're actually bedded on um, pine sawdust, um, the pine's also meant to help keep infection rates down. Um, so, oh. Here we go. So, I'm doing a lambing day. Um, we're doing about two a day um, with ten people in this one. We're doing a week, and the lambs are getting fed up with being cuddled. Yeah, and it, it's, it's been very good. I was quite surprised at the many people that wanted a ticket. And I think we're about to out the tickets, which is really good. Um, and I think it's quite nice being able to share the kind of landing experience with people. Um, and I think we've only had one so far, but um, they seem to have enjoyed it, which is good. Um, We've also we've got the chicks to show them, and we've got to see the hens and some of the calves. So, um, and they've quite enjoyed, I think, just seeing all the different things that go on. And, and everyone loves a pet lamb puddle, which is good. Yeah. And I'm doing these tours for a week. Um. So yeah, so the uh, um, go rural. Um, you'll. If you look them up on the Facebook page, you'll see lots of places to stay and lots of tours to go around. Um, I recommend you definitely visit something in your area or, or find an area where you've always wanted to go and then um, look for some accommodation on, on, on that place.
Um, but yeah. So we've um, really enjoyed being part of it. They've given us lots of support and encouragement. And um, tomorrow you're off to Lou Newton, who's maybe about 20 miles from us, the other side of Forfa. And uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.